Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and uh, welcome everybody to join uh, this uh, webinar which I claim it will be as motivational and inspirational as it should be uh, and I hope you will enjoy it and also from another hand I hope that you contribute to this enjoyment so we are looking uh, forward for your uh, questions your comments uh, your uh, interaction with Mr. Daniele Miucci, our uh, uh, guest today, to tell us about the life of one of the well-known uh, scientists, uh, late scientist Nikola uh, Tesla. Uh, before uh, we we start, maybe I I should uh, switch uh, a few minutes uh, in Arabic because uh, many students uh, of the University of Jordan are attending, so I wish to welcome them personally, and also some participants from other countries. I hope everybody will be able to join in the next few minutes. Uh, so in Arabic, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, tullab al-Jam al-Urduniya. Tullab al-Li hadrin wa am baqra asma'ahum awal shi taban fariq lamda. Hadol daiman bashufhum, awu basma'a sotom. Lakin al-Tullab al-Li bil-Lista khasa in al-Shafi minhum asma'a Tullab dar-Rastom بسنة أولى في زمن الكورونا فأنا سعيدة إني بشوف أسماءهم إذا إذا ذاكرتي ما ما خانتني زي مثلا مين عم بقرأ أسماء زي مثلا فرح زينة أعتقد هدول جيل الكورونا اللي أنا درستهم بسنة أولى ولا لا إذا موجودين تفتحوا الكاميرا أو تفتحوا المايك مزبوط مزبوط دكتور إحنا كتير انبسطنا لما أخذنا الكورس أكتر من كورس معي وحابين انه يعني انه نت... نعرف اكثر عن الاشياء اللي بتعمليها انت هندسه زينه صح صح تمام كويس انك هندسه و... وعم تحضري لانه العالم اللي بنحكي عنه يعني كان ناس بتسميه فيزيست ناس بتسميه الكتريكال انجينير ناس بتسميه ميكانيكال انجينير انا بسميه ساينتست فهو عامل اوفرلابنج بين ال... بين العلوم كلياتها وكويس انه انتم طلاب الهندسه يكون عندكم اهتمام فانا مبسوطه اني بشوفكم كمان مره فبرجع بحكي مبسوطة إني بشوف طلاب الجامعة الأردنية عم يحضروا ولذلك أول باراجراف رح تكون بالعربي عشان نعطي دقائق معدودة للناس اللي تأخروا بالدخول إنهم يدخلوا وبعدين رح نبدأ بالبرزنتيشن سو so خلوني أفتح هذا الصوت تسمعوه بالعربي وبعدين بنفوت دانيالا I will open an audio clip it's in Arabic and uh, it's about uh, how uh, my university, the University of Jordan, is uh, closely um, uh, concerned about uh, science education and research and about the vision of the university. It's in Arabic, uh, but it's like a few minutes. Okay. هنا بدأت الحكاية حكاية الحبر وهو يكتب وطنا وينسج عباءة ويصنع تاريخا حكاية الأردن الذي تجلى على المكان بجامعته الأولى الجامعة الأردنية هنا كان انحياز الأردن للدحنون والمآذن والأجراس والورق والعلم ضمن رحلة صاغتها الجامعة لتترك في ضمير الحضارة علماء أوصلوا فكرهم ومفكرين جادت عبقريتهم ومبدعين استلهموا المكان بكل ما فيه من تفاصيل تسير بالوطن في دروب التقدم وعبقرية العلم وشمولية الفكر وتجليات الأدب تذهب الأردنية إلى الحداثة وتستشرق الزمن القادم وهي تؤمن أنه زمن العلم والتكنولوجيا فتمضي في مسار النور وهي تعرف أن المختبر والتجربة طريق النهوض بالعلم الحديث العلم الذي يكتمل بتمثل التكنولوجيا منهجا للتواصل مع العصر والعلم فتعلي من شأن التنافسية للوصول بالطموح الأردني في العلم 
والاتصال إلى غاياته العليا فالعالم المعاصر نسيج هذه القرية الكونية المنفتحة على ينابيع العلم والتحضر والحياة Welcome again to this uh, webinar about uh, Nikola Tesla, the scientist behind uh, the genius. I will uh, kick off this uh, webinar by a small, uh, very short presentation to put you um, in the line uh, or in the theme of this webinar, uh, who's the guest, the speaker, and who's the hero that we will talk, we will be talking about the scientist Nikola Tesla. First of all, we started with uh, a short uh, audio clip uh, from uh, the uh, one of the anthems that were uh, developed for the University of Jordan uh, celebration uh, to cover more than 50 years uh, of operational work. But nowadays, our university is more than 60 years as the oldest and the most important university in Jordan. So uh, the, the audio clip was uh, in Arabic, but uh, I could um, translate briefly the main idea to let um, Daniele Miucci uh, understand uh, what's the credo of education in general and science education in particular at the University of Jordan. As the University of Jordan, we believe that science is the most important tool to face all challenges in our society. So we believe that science first and should always come first. And for that reason, the university tries to put all available tools, technologies, even art 
even even um, uh, music, even laboratories in the service of science and scientists. So this is what was uh, said. And it was highlighting that this revolution in science as higher education started from this place, from the University of Jordan, because it was the first. So we call it the mother university. Now, to move uh, forward in this presentation, back to our um, webinar titled Nikola Tesla, the scientist behind the genius. This webinar is organized by Lambda Physics Group at the University of Jordan, a group of physics lovers and fans initiated in 2015 in the Department of Physics at the School of Science, the University of Jordan. And that said, um, I should not forget uh, to acknowledge uh, the tool that is provided by the University of Jordan for us, teachers and students, to keep using this Microsoft Teams, not only for um, e-learning and uh, online classes, but also for holding such uh, events and also to, to, ho to host participants and speakers from outside the university community. And this celebration uh, of uh, Nikola Tesla as a scientist is not the only event that being organized this year by Lambda Physics Group. It's a series of events under the umbrella of International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. This is a global celebration of basic science over all the world, which was uh, inaugurated by UNESCO last, uh, June, last July in 2022, and it was supposed to continue till the end of June 2023. But I think recently I, I, I read that it will continue till the end of 2023. The main goal of this uh, uh, declaration of the 2022-2023 as the year of basic sciences for sustainable development is to raise the awareness of the importance and the value of basic science, not only in teaching and research, but also in development of all aspects of our lives. And for that reason, we uh, hold a series of activities. The first one will be this webinar uh, where we host uh, Mr. Daniele Miucci. Why we dedicate uh, our celebration in the basic sciences to, to talk about a scientist, not necessarily Nikola, but why to, to choose the figure as a scientist? Nikola Tesla was, the, was not the first uh, scientist to be celebrated of, uh, by Lambda. If you go to Lambda website, or if you go to Lambda uh, channel on the YouTube, you will see that in 2015, we as Lambda revived uh, the story life of Al Hassan ibn Al Haytham, a worldwide uh, known uh, uh, Muslim scientist. Then in 2017, we celebrated the story life of uh, Mary Curie also a well-known uh, scientist, a well-known figure in science. Today, while we are celebrating the International Year of Basic Sciences, it came to our mind for a reason probably that you will see later in the slides to celebrate by, uh, of Nikola Tesla. So Nikola Tesla was not uh, the first scientist that Lambda is trying to revive his uh, story life among uh, the community of scientists and non-scientists. Uh, who is Nikola, Nikola Tesla? I think probably students know much better than us academics about this scientist because Nikola Tesla served as a hero for most of us when we were studying science or when we were studying engineers. So probably I could leave the floor to Lambda to say what they know about Nikola Tesla before I move forward. Lambda, Tuka. Hello, hi, good afternoon. Can you Tuka? hear me? Yes, would you like to, to, to tell us what do you know about Nikola Tesla? Um, I, I, from what I know, he is a 
He was born in modern day C Croatia. Can you just uh, raise your voice? Okay, I will try my best. Camera. Okay, yeah, one second. Hi. Uh, okay, so from what I know about Nikola Tesla is that he was a very well known. Um, he, he, some people consider the, him a uh, an electrical engineer, while others consider him a physicist. But he was a one of the people who started working on the AC motor, and he was a big um supporter of alternating current instead of the direct current which was what was mostly used and without all of his innovations we wouldn't be using electricity as the way that we are using it today so his contributions to science and especially to electricity and magnetism were really really important to all the applications that we are using right now right here um, and from what I know about him that was that he lived a very humble life and he wasn't very well known in his days. He wasn't very appreciated in his days. As far as I know, he was nominated for a Nobel Prize, but didn't win it. And um, later so in life, he it was like a rumor information. This it's not it's not mm. confirmed because normally mm. Nobel, Nobel Prize um, uh, no, nominees, they, they don't um, don't, they don't be announced to the public unless mm -hmm. like 50 years or so passed on this nomination. Mm -hmm. But I also yeah. read about that, that there yeah. was uh, some rumors saying that he and Addison were both nominated and Neither both of them. rejected. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. so what else? Um, I know that he also lived a very humble life and towards the last few years of his life he lived a very poor life indeed and he had some debts to pay and he was moving between places um even though he was at that time in the u.s trying to uh, get funding for his ideas and so um so yeah that's what i know about nikola tesla and how do you hear about it about him as uh, let's say young generations uh i would say i heard mostly about him from social media and maybe groups that I sometimes browse or so. Also in public media or like uh, TV shows, he was mentioned in one of the, one of the series that I watched and uh, it was it was a series that you would expect somebody like Nikola Tesla to be mentioned in. Um, it's not one of those um, documentaries. It was most, more of a sitcom or a, like uh, it's the Big Bang Theory, if anybody knows it here. Um, and he was mentioned more than once as one of the scientists who were very bright, but very underappreciated in his time. I would also add that his name has been uh, brought back to light uh, by the century uh, by yes. by uh, um, by let's Elon say Musk. Uh, renaming a few places in honor of Nikola Tesla. Mm -hmm. I, I would say this uh, this initiative started by uh, the General Assembly of uh, units and measures in the world when they decided to uh, honor Tesla by uh, claiming that the unit of the magnetic field is named in his honor is named mm -hmm. Tesla. So you as physics and uh, engineering students the first time you hear about Tesla in the physics textbook when you learn magnetic field. But if you look around, you will see there is an airport named after Tesla. There is a museum named after Tesla. There are many science foundations nowadays in, uh, in Serbia, in Croatia, I think in US even, named after Tesla. And there are probably a couple of monuments also celebrating Tesla in addition to Science Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would not expect that there would be any Science Museum nowadays over all the world that does not host Tesla coil. I would be surprised mm -hmm. if there is a Science Museum without Tesla coil. So if you go to Science Museum, you see that he's now celebrated over all the world. His ideas is celebrated over all the words, not only in in, uh, in textbooks. Not to forget to mention the uh, electric car company 
Tesla. It's one okay. of the most and, famous. And that's also a clear example. For example, mm -hmm. the, the electric car company. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Tuka. Yeah. Yes, so probably and, I can continue. I want yeah. to add um, another thing. Ruba. Um, I want to start with him uh, with his uh, famous uh, quote, which uh, which uh, which he said that the most important product of a creative mind is and the invention. Its ultimate aim is the role uh, the role of mind over nature and the use of its forces for the needs of mankind. So it's hard to imagine what life. Uh, would be like without uh, our electrical grid uh, system uh, powering everything from uh, from lights to the computers and businesses using safe, efficient and affordable alternating current um, electricity uh, or how different the world would be without the benefits of Wi-Fi and radio remote controls and robotics. Uh, these and many other ad, um, uh, advancements were based on the inventions of one of the history's greatest scientists, Nikola Tesla. Thank you. So, Rupa. yes. OK, shall I continue? Yes, please. So that was uh, our hero, Nikola Tesla. Now, what kind of celebration that we are trying to do today? we are trying to introduce Nikola Tesla in a different way, in an artistic style, because our guest is an artist, is a comic artist and a graphic designer who, let's say, crafted this book or this novel about this worldwide recognized scientist, Nikola Tesla. So what you see here is the, the cover of the graphic novel, Nikola Tesla, the man who defined the future by Daniele Miucci. And who's Daniele? Daniele Miucci, as he liked to, to call himself, he's a comic uh, artist and a graphic designer. Uh, he, uh, in terms of um, education, let's say, he has a degree in architecture and also a diploma in art and another diploma in graphic uh, design. He was born in uh, the region of uh, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, in the town of uh, Bordinone in Italy uh, in 1982. And uh, he grew up uh, in uh, another uh, charming place called uh, Lucca in that uh, city of uh, Tuscany, which is uh, uh, recognized by its nice uh, nature I think uh, it looks like uh, like uh, um, a natural painting. He grew up there and this, as he said in his biography, this uh, was the main base of uh, his passion towards uh, art. He started uh, his education by joining uh, a school uh, of art uh, in this uh, local bar, Luca. But then he found uh, himself not only uh, with a strong passion towards art, but is fascinating with uh, building uh, design and architecture. And that's why he studied architecture at the University of Trieste uh, in uh, Italy. He has uh, different uh, path lines in his uh, career life. He worked as industrial engineer, as a product designer, as interior designer, as illustrator, as comic artist, as a graphic designer. I would summarize them all and say he's a professional uh, a graphic designer, professional artist who has more than 10 years of experience in, uh, in this uh, uh, field. I don't know if he liked this portrait that I bought, but this portrait I took it by my camera when I met him for the first time when he was an artist speaking about a scientist. This was caught my, at my attention when I met him for the first uh, time. And um, before I say where we, uh, we met, uh, among other qualifications and degrees of education that uh, uh, Daniele uh, has in his uh, scientific record, I think he's proud of getting this Tesla medal as a gratitude 
and a recognition from Tesla Science Foundation because of his role in reviving uh, the story life of such uh, a scientist who changed uh, the way we think about electricity. Uh, this is the city where I met um, uh, Daniele Miucci and where uh, the idea of this webinar uh, came off in my mind. It's Teriesta and uh, for several years it was, it has been recognized as the city of science, not only because this city is full of scientific institutes and labs, it has um, Synchrotron uh, Teriesta, an accelerator uh, light source uh, of Synchrotron, where, where uh, I am there as a research fellow for two years now. And also it has many um, uh, scientific laboratories in terms of uh, astronomy, uh, atomic and molecular physics, astronomical uh, physics, biology, biophysics in many different uh, fields. But above all, it's considered as the city of science because it brings science down to the street, down to the public. The photo that you see here is the main square in Teresta. In this square, uh, they used to make many scientific festivals over all the year. And it was September uh, 2022, when there was a scientific event that is annual event in Teresta. It's called Teresta Next, where all scientists rushed to the street in this day, rushed to this square and introduced their experiments, their theories, their ideas, to the audience and the audience are young people, children, uh, elderly people, scientists, non-scientists from all fields you could imagine. So there you would see an atomic and molecular physicist introduce his uh, experiment in the accelerator showing a demo in this square. There you would find a biologist uh, training uh, kids how to extract DNA. There you would see an engineer doing some fluid dynamics in front of the public. So in that day, I was at the end of a long experiment at the accelerator and I got the email about Teriestanex and I couldn't resist that I should go and walk around in the city and see the, the experience of science in the eyes of all generations. So it happened that I passed by one of these tents and there was a group of people among them the guests of uh, this webinar who are celebrating and uh, celebrating um, the uh, character of Nikola Tesla. So I saw lots of posters watercolored with the portrait of Nikola Tesla or with some clips, some sketches of Nikola Tesla life. And because I am a physicist and because I am one of those uh, have been inspired with the life of Nikola Tesla, it caught my attention. So I stopped there and I started to talk with the people with my broken Italian at that time. And uh, I realized that this man is the author of a graphic novel. And he did this novel during COVID. He invested his time during the COVID lockdown to revive the story life of a scientist. I was so much amazed. And he gave me an invitation on the um, one, one day after for an evening uh, gathering at a cafe, Cafe del Specchi in, in Teresta. Again, Teresta is a city of science where you, where you uh, meet people in the cafe, they, they organize scientific meeting, cultural meeting, um, discussion panels. So they drink coffee and they introduce books. They drink coffee and they introduce comic uh, novels. So there was an evening dedicated for Daniele to uh, introduce his, uh, his uh, novel uh, to the audience. And I attended there and he was there signing his graphic novel to uh, the people, to the participants. I was so much amazed that there is a person dedicated the lockdown of COVID while he's not a scientist, but he dedicated this to revive the life of a scientist, to appreciate the life of a scientist. And he said, I got inspired by the life of this man, Nicola. So I thought I should do something about him. This is, uh, was very astonishing for me. And I felt at that moment, I should transfer this experience to my students. I should let them see another way of reviving science characters. Art is also something important. 
Art is also a tool, not only art, but also history. Normally, when I, when I teach um, Physics 101, for example, I am used to tell my students about Newton, about Archimedes. When I teach magnetic field, electric field, I am used to tell my students about Tesla, about Faraday. So it was for me the first graphic novel, novel that I uh, uh, see about a scientist. So I wanted to, to expose my student to this experience. And that moment we exchanged our contact details and we agreed that we should meet at the University of Jordan one day in person, online, whatever tool. And then the idea of the webinar came up through uh, the International Year of Basic Sciences. I think that's all what I can um, say about uh, the graphic novel of uh, Daniele. And uh, I should not waste your time more because what awaits you is, uh, I suppose, a motivational presentation. Uh, it's not the whole part of the uh, webinar, but it will be the ignition for your uh, thoughts, for your comments, for your uh, questions, for your interaction with Daniele Miucci. So Daniele, the mic is yours now. <coughs> okay, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me. And uh, this is like a great opportunity for me. And I'm always having fun when I'm describing Nikola Tesla live because uh, there's so much that people don't know and there is so much to, to research still because it was kind of uh, hidden in his lab all the time. So like people don't actually know uh, what he was doing. So I would like to uh, just explain a little bit uh, quickly like my, my background and why I became a comic artist. And it's because I grew up in uh, Tuscany, this little town, Luca, is uh, uh, is hosting every year for about 60 here this year, the biggest uh, comic festival in Europe, and it's like the second one, uh, the the biggest in the world. And um, so I was like surrounded by arch beautiful architecture from Middle Age and Renaissance, and then. Uh, this comic festival and so eventually I became I became let's say an artist but uh, when you listed my basically re, uh, uh, CV yeah I was impre impressed about about lis listening to how many things I did how many jobs I did and I'm still poor like like, like Tesla so like I didn't get rich on the way and um, uh, I will start uh, by showing you like just this. This is the the real. I wanted, book. To, I wanted to interrupt you, Daniele. Yeah. You are not alone. You are not giving getting rich. You are you yeah, are yeah, living yeah. the life of scientist. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we share this concern with you, but we are happy. No problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As long as you choose what you love, you should be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Go ahead. So this is the first uh, edition of the book. But actually we finished already, uh, like it was uh, sold out. And uh, so this is the second edition instead. It's a little bit different. And uh, I, I mean, it's different like the look. So this book consists of 200 pages of uh, like all watercolor. And these 200 pages describe the, the literally the, the real life of Nikola Tesla and I, I decided to do this for 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 few reasons like main reason I think is because in Italy Nikola Tesla basically disappeared because uh, because of Marconi and so the invention of the of the radio uh, the radio device and it's because during that time uh, when we had uh, actually, after when we had uh, our dictatorship with Mussolini, like we cancelled all all the inventions and whatever was in, was coming from abroad, and so like uh, 
they push Marconi and uh, literally Nikola Tesla disappear from the history book. And so in Italy, we know that Marconi invented the radio while instead he assembled the radio device with 17 patents from uh, by Tesla. This is one of the first thing. And uh, I was uh, interested about him because when I studied architecture, I had uh, two, three exams uh, about physics. So I, have, I had physics one and physics two. Physics two, you study electromagnetism. And I only heard the name of this. Uh, it, I'm talking about 25 years ago. And I heard this name like Nikola Tesla, and which sounded to me Italian. And I didn't actually wonder because like I just studied physics. And one day I went in Istria, so which is Croatia, and they have a little Hall of Fame. And I saw the name of Nikola Tesla in it and it's written with the K. So uh, I wonder like, so this guy wasn't actually Italian, he was Croatian. And then I read a little bit of his biography and I figured it out that he wasn't even Croatian. But he was a Serbian because Tesla was born in Krajina, which is like at the time it was a border, a, a military border between the Austrian Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And and this area, um, they were uh, they were only Serbians, so Orthodox Serbians. And um, Serbians are famous to be very tall and very muscled. And they were the guard, the frontier guard, the, the border police of uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So Nikola Tesla was born there. But there is another important thing that I would like to remark. To, to say that he was in Croatian, but he was uh, Serbian is that uh, is a, is a very sad story that he, that comes from the Second World War because uh, everybody with this with his surname were deported to a concentration camp just because they were Serbian Orthodox and not Catholic. So and they were deported by Croatia. So it's absolutely not Croatian, even if Croatian they say is Croatian now just because he's a famous figure. And um, when I started uh, reading and researching his life, uh, it was very inspiring because, first of all, in every, uh, he, he appeared already in some comic books, but in these comic books, they don't tell the story of Nikola Tesla, they, they just show him as a as a crazy guy that goes to the moon or to Mars and invents uh, lasers and all these things. Very like like a superhero, like Superman. And so um, basically, like the the audience build up this reputation around Nikola Tesla name that he was like just a crazy guy. Instead, when I read uh, his biography and I researched, I was like, he was a superhero, like, like, like a normal man, because he he was uh, uh, he was able to overcome uh, a lot of uh, of troubles in his life, and uh, always fo focusing on a goal and uh, and reaching, like. Uh, and uh, overcome all these challenges, and he had he had many since uh, literally since the day he was born. Because, uh, for example, the day he was born, Nikola Tesla was born with the with the heart on the right side, so he was supposed to die, and uh, and instead he survived this, uh, literally from the very beginning. And. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know, Anand, if you want to ask me something already. Maybe not. Um, yeah, 
I can um, what I can say more. You want you uh, want to I don't know if uh, Nicola uh, Daniele, sorry, uh, you would like to share slides or what? Yeah, uh, I I uh, OK. I just uh, because I will use these slides to to help. Yeah, whenever, whenever you feel you you would like to share, just share. Yeah. Now, OK, so uh, here you can see there is this QR code that is there and is where you could you can purchase the book, but uh, this is not why I'm doing this now. Um, it would be very nice, though, if you have Instagram to follow my Instagram. <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, I am when I, when I uh, designed this book, I decided to use the as technique like the watercolor technique because it's the technique to represent lights. So it was like uh, I think very um, related to Tesla, and uh, I wanted to show in this book like the real man. So like uh, I, I researched a lot and I went uh, on uh, in in every places he lived in Europe before uh, before moving to US. And I did it backwards. So the last, the last place I visited is the the place he was born, and the first one it was instead uh, Prague and Budapest. Basically, that they are the last pl places he he lived before before moving. So why why Tesla is for me very important, and it would be very important nowadays, is because he has many messages. Uh, that that he can he can uh, send to people um, even nowadays. For example, Tesla always always went out of his comfort zone, and uh, he he left uh, he left his place very young, and um, because he wanted to study. And uh, so you can see I place like some sentences. I I wrote this book as well. And so I like this uh, this sentence, like leaving the family nest minimized the distraction and allowed me to change the way I saw the world. And uh, Tesla was a traveler too, and he really be believed in the connection between people and between communities and different countries to improve, to, op to, to get open-minded. Uh, and that this is, this is, it's vital. It's vital for a man, not only for an artist or for a scientist. And I wanted to say another thing uh, that pushed me to make this book is that a lot of people, when they meet me, they say, ah, like, I would like to be like as creative as you uh, and know how to draw. And uh, this is completely wrong. This is completely wrong because every man is creative. Like we we are born like that, like there's no scientist that is not creative. Actually, all of your work is like is led by creativity. So the the thing is like to find a way to trig it, to trig it. And I, because I read also the life of other scientists, I always remember that Einstein, for example, he came to the Maybe maybe you get me wrong, but that that's what I read. Like that, he came to the relativity theory. Not actually, like he was like observing by himself the sky, and then he came with that. And then of course, like he put his his knowledge in it. But the idea came from creativity, like not from 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 labs, for example. So. Uh, for me, this is very important. So, and Tesla, uh, for example, he was, uh, he liked to say that he wasn't a physicist, that he wasn't uh, a scientist, but that he was an inventor. So he was like a creative man. And he came to all of his invention just because he had a hint, he had something, and he followed that way. 
and uh, I, I, I strongly believe that uh, if you don't leave your comfort zone, this is something that can trigger your creativity because you get in touch with other people and uh, you just change the way you are like by improving like uh, like meeting people from all around the world and uh, i try uh, so yeah and uh, what about like uh, an, an, uh, another very important thing is like uh, uh, to me it's like control the anxiety right control the anxiety and try to overcome uh, the challenges and tesla had uh, uh, from the very beginning and for example when he when he went to study when he decided uh, actually when his father allowed him to join the university he was already uh, uh, self-taught and when he joined the university in Graz, he was already like in polemic with some professor and already he saw in the future because but using creativity and um, because these are uh, academic world in Graz was um, wasn't open-minded he quit so Tesla quit many times and he jumped back on the horse and 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 face new challenges this happened in Graz this happened in uh, in Prague and um, and then it happened with Edison later and uh, yeah I would like to Uh, I go back, sorry, I go back here. Yeah. Um, you stop sharing. Yeah, I, okay. I will share, I will share again uh, later. Okay. Yeah, and um, you, you, maybe you want to ask me some question because it would help me to. Uh, I, I wanted to, to stop somewhere, but not now. At the yeah. academic life of Nikola Tesla. Yeah. You mentioned something about the university. Yeah. And I, I, I think this worth uh, a stop at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell you like the, the way the way the way it happened that he joined the university. Uh, so Tesla um, being a Serbian orthodox from that uh, from that region from Krajina he was supposed to be or an army officer or a, a priest uh, let's say this is was the plan uh, of the family yeah but it was the plan for the community like they were not allowed to join uh, the, for example they were not allowed the Serbian under Austro-Hungarian Empire to have the the classes in their own language so they were considered like the lowest, uh, like they were considered like farmers or like, you know, rednecks. And uh, so you, you can join the army and be border police or you Serbian Orthodox and you become a priest. So that's the only way. You cannot be uh, educated as a, a scientist, as an engineer. Uh, you can, but like it would be, it would be very hard because Serbian families they were very poor okay and then so they, he or she needs uh, to uh, learn a new language yeah and uh, and tesla he studied in german all his schools and then because his father was a serbian orthodox priest so he knew he knew two more languages and a bit of italian so he knew like serbian and then he knew G greek and so Te nikola tesla learn all of these languages like perfectly fluently and basically when he be, when he was at the age by the age of 40 he was speaking seven or eight languages perfectly french and so this is another important thing uh, like the more languages you know the more the smarter you are the smarter you become and the more open-minded you are because like you think in different languages so this is another thing I, I, I want to remark because they say, everybody say, 
ah, Tesla was a genius. So like, there's no genius in, this is my opinion, like there's no genius. Like we all, we all start from, from the same level, more or less. Then there is people that there's a little bit more talent. But the point is, if you don't use it, if you don't train your talent, it stays there, like it's pointless, you know? Like you can, for example, be born that you know how to draw a little bit, but you, if you practice, you keep improving. If you don't practice, you, you stay there. So it, like it's, it's just there. Uh, and also like if you don't know how to draw, you can learn how to draw for sure. For sure. It depends like how, how much practice you put in it. So, and, uh, and, and Tesla was like a hard worker. So like the, the secret of his success, it was like, like focusing on the, on the, on the goal and keep going and try to always uh, improve himself by studying. He, Tesla knew Voltaire by, by heart or, or, or Goethe by heart. He was li really like, a, like his brain was a sponge, literally. And, uh, and, he, and he knew that he was confident and confidence is very important too, like for a scientist, because like you cannot like, you have to question yourself, but you need to, you need to be confident because you need to keep being motivated to go on with your experiment. This is, these are all the rules for a nice, for a happy life. Actually, it's not just scientists or artists, you know, like if you follow these, you'll be will be balanced. And uh, so basically, um, he was his father wanted him to to become a priest, and his uncles, they that they were uh, Serbian, Aust basically Austro-Hungarian officer, they wanted him to become a, a soldier. And so Tesla, uh, after he finished the the high school in um, in Karlovac, which is Croatia still, he moved back to Gospić, basically to his hometown. Uh, despite his father said, you, you cannot come back here because there is a cholera outbreak. And, and Tesla, because he was like a, like a hothead, he didn't, he didn't listen to his father. He came back and he actually got sick with cholera and he stayed nine months in bed risking to die and uh, but he used in a slight way this event to ask his father if he could join the university so he said like you know i think i can recover if you let me go and study at university and his father said okay like if this makes you feel better and he actually recovered and what he did he moved with one year on the mountains to recover his lungs with his uh, with his uncle on the mountains, like out of map, out of map. And in I this like way, this out of map. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was nowhere because he wanted to avoid the the army duty, and so he avoided. And like he conv he convinced his uh, uncle to give him the money to go to Graz and join the university. But, but after like a few months, he quit. And he went back to his, to his uncle and he asked more money and he went to Prague. And he tried to join the university, but he actually didn't join the university because, because uh, he came too late. And uh, also he didn't know, uh, I think uh, he, he didn't know Czech language, like. Slovakian, he didn't know that. So he wasn't ab admitted to, to study there. So what he did, like uh, secretly, he used to join the lessons of, of different faculties that uh, he liked and, and that he thought he was, he was good for his... Uh, as a as, uh, listener. Yeah, yeah, he was studying different lessons from different faculties and he basically built up his own university plan uh, i i would say it's it's good that you mentioned this because 
then some would expect that he didn't he doesn't have a degree he didn't have a, have a degree which means he did not study it's just a sort of genius or talent which is not true he did study but he didn't end up with a degree but he studied uh, like uh, two or three times those who hold a degree right yeah because in part of his autobiography he says that he passed a number of courses that's more than the double of what is normally requested to get the degree in engineering. Ah, uh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did study, but he did not end up with, with a degree. Yeah, no degree. And you know what who did the same in modern times? He was Steve Jobs. Steve, he was? Steve Jobs. In that time. Steve Jobs in an, in modern time. Uh, yes. Steve Jobs didn't get a degree, but he joined the 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 university and he was attending different courses that he thought they were very useful for him. And then he came up with the computer. Yes. Yeah. But again, uh, in in my understanding, this means that uh, getting educated is important, but having a degree doesn't mean that you are well educated. No. To succeed, you need to be educated, yeah. which is the normal way to get a degree. But not all those end up with a degree, they end up with knowledge. So in, in, in the case of Nikola Tesla, he, he didn't manage to graduate from a university of a degree, but through all his life, he was getting education. He was self-studying or university studying, but unfortunately, he didn't get the degree, but he did get the knowledge and the education. Yeah, and also this is my opinion. I think I think uh, in Italy, for example, the, the university structure has to be completely rethink, rethought completely, completely. Okay. Because first of all, it's like this for like a hundred years, right? And then because, uh, for example, at architecture, I remember I had I had some subjects that they were really like you, you don't need it, you know. For example, if I want to be an interior designer, do I have to study physics? You have to. I have to. No, but this is a this is an example, right? But if I want to be like a structurist or like then yeah. So let's have let's have different these different paths and like and also I really believe that some faculties they should like cross. This I agree. Yeah. This I agree. I don't agree that uh, why should I study, for example, I am a physicist. Why should I study religion? Why should I study art? No, I should because getting a little information about that branch would be useful for me in the future. Not probably not for my physical experiment, but probably in my communication to spread the word of my physics. I would need language. I would need art. So th yeah. th this is the part. But on the other side, that some different fields need to be overlapped, or at least they need to talk to each other. I do agree. This is very much yeah. important. So for example, now there is a branch of, um, of um, research is called, it's not a new branch, but it's not very much recognized in the scientific um, uh, fields, which is the history of science. This is something very much important. And I think our webinar today and your graphic novel fits very well with this idea. If you want to understand science truly, you should have some knowledge about its history, how this scientific idea, theory, experiment, uh, scientific people, scientists, humans, how did they develop their career, how they faced challenges, how, they, how did they get their education? How did they manage to overcome obstacles? So this you don't learn it through uh, working, uh, through reading a textbook. This cannot be covered in a textbook. It could be covered in other branches of education like history, like art. So there should be something called the art of science, the history of science. And I do believe that your work falls in these two categories. Uh, for example, I think like, uh... You want to be a great scientist, 
you don't have to study only science, like you said, right? Because you need to open like new channels and connection in your brain. It's literally like even it's bi biological, right? Like this is like neuro neurobiology, neurobiology is true. Like so the more the more is wide your vision, the more you can trick creativity. And so an example is again Nikola Tesla when he came to the invention of the AC motor, he didn't he didn't he didn't have the idea in a lab. He knew there was a there was a way to do it. He didn't know the scheme. He was sure. And then at some point when he was in Budapest in this park, he started uh, reciting the Goethe first by heart. And it was during the sunset, and he said that he was tricked. Like he came, like with this, like the the masterpiece of Goethe, and he started acting, like rehearsing it, while while the sunset was going. And then he said, like I had the scheme in my head, and it was so simple, because like something opened in his brain, like he just connected. But because, but I. I'm pretty sure that he, that if Tesla was only like a, a physicist and he didn't, and if he wasn't interested in literature, he he wouldn't come to that. It just it's all it's all connected. It's all connected, and uh, also the fact uh, that he was uh, recovering from uh, a break breakdown. He was depressed. And uh, it was, and so he was having like uh, some physical routine every day in this park, like walking, you know, breathing, and then, and when the, when it was the right moment, he, he got the invention. And he said that many times that all his invention they came they come out like this. Then there is practicing, and you like it was very handy too, because it's like also important. Yes. Yeah. It was very handy because when I saw original devices made by by that by his hands, they look like they came from an in, industrial machine. Like he was very precise, uh, well there, and yeah. I I used to tell my students, you don't learn much from a successful device or successful experiment. You learn much from a failed experiment, although I consider there is no failure in experiment. It's it's another way to succeed, let's say. So you you better learn from a failed experiment or from a broken device. When you get something not working and you have to, uh, let's say, screw it down, you have to uh, dismount it, you have to disassemble this device or this experiment, you learn more. You learn more. You because you you know what you know what is inside. So it's not always that we learn from these well-established experiment, well-established devices. We learn better if we have something not working, if we have something broken. Yeah. Actually, I think that the the creative process is like you cannot you cannot uh, think that like I study, 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 and when I'm perfect, I'm gonna have like one, uh, one test, and that's it. And I did it, you know, because I studied so much that I became great. No, it doesn't work like that. Like the, if I wouldn't even even uh, call that as failures, because like, it, like progress is like pass through steps that you can call it failure, but you have to fail to understand what I have to change in it, in this, in this, and then, and then you become to, and then you progress, you progress, but everything in nature works like that. Everything, like even evolution, like whatever, it works like this, everything. This is, these are the physics rules, right? The, 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 the physics law, it's like Universal this. laws. Yeah. Then there are like hot head like uh, Edison that he didn't want to study at all. Like and Tesla was saying like if this guy just knew like three equation, right? Like he wouldn't spend so much time like doing like and and wasting material, you know, like. Yeah. But still 
even Edison, he was he had a strong will, right? Like he was working all the time. It just was a capitalist entrepreneur. And so, businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there yeah. is there is so yeah, much definitely. about Tesla that is that is that you can see in modern times. That a lot. Another important thing is like building connection with the right people. You have to surround yourself with the right people like and you and you can even feel the frequencies of a of a of a of a person that is not on your right i, I like this uh, terminology you feel yeah. the frequency yeah 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 you feel it's about that everything is physics like really everything like what our feelings they come from the brain and they are like uh, a chemical reaction in our brain that goes through the to the nervous system and is electricity. So every feeling you have, if it's love, if it's anxiety, is triggered. It's like our body is a lab, right? And if you think about that, even like you can control better your feelings, right? I don't know, the anxiety before taking an exam, if you feel, if you think about that, it, you know, like it's just a chemical reaction, and you can deal that with, with that much better, you know, much better. And if you think that, yeah, whatever, if I fail, like I know where I'm going to fail. So like I was supposed to fail because I didn't know that, like, and now I know. This is this, this is supposed to be the mood and uh, to, to live, right? And it's all about physics, actually. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, know whether you want uh, to to allow uh, some uh, questions because I saw uh, some hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't know. Maybe Arwa was raising her hand. Um, yes, I was raising my hand. I had a question actually. Okay. Yeah. Can we take the question, Daniele? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay please, Arwa. So. Uh, uh, Daniel, Mr. Daniele said that uh, Nikola Tesla was depressed for a split second. But... Uh, you are physics students, right? Yes, yes. I'm a physics student at the University of Jordan. Okay. Um, so anyone so... who wants to ask a question, uh, please just say your name, uh, at least your country, and your major. Oh, okay. So yes, uh, maybe this does not really matter, or maybe it's not a big question, but I'd just like to um, ask if, like, how i mean the relationship between depression and being smart person or a genius or someone uh creative at what you do what you do i don't know if there's a relationship or or something so what do you think between so, what between what and what depression and being creative at what you're doing which means depression and success okay yeah yeah exactly what do you so, think Daniele? So f first, uh, I must say that when I joined the university, you know, I had the two subscription paper here and I didn't know if I wanted to go to architecture or, or biotechnology, completely different because like I, I'm even nowadays, I'm really thrilled by reading articles about neurobiology and how our brain works. And so we come to depression. So. Depression is again like is a is an unbalanced chemic chemistry in our brain. That's what it is, right? And that's why they cure you with some like medic med medicine with drugs that they balance that, right? For example, lithium. You have lithium in your brain, and when it goes down, like you, like depress depression is tricked, like so they give you that, right? But you cannot. You have to microdose. Otherwise, you completely break your brain. So that's what depression is. And everybody has at least three times in, in our life depression. Maybe you don't recognize it, right? And you say like, ah, this period is a mood swings. But actually, there are three periods in life. And it's, uh, and it, and it's, and it's very, I think it's completely right. One is teenage, you know, hold your hormones they just messed up and you can have depression and that's actually when you had when you have uh, like suicide cases like they happen in teenage 
or they happen around like 34 year old and then they can happen like when you're middle age and it's like a combination of like life events of course because life happens but also like this balance in brain like your hormones change your chemistry change right so th there's not a, a a real connection to me this is this is my opinion like be being a, a like to become a scientist, you need to pass through depression. But I'm, uh, I, I strongly believe that if you have depression, like even strong depression, and you overcome that, then you build up confidence much more, right? And like, literally, like probably like the level of uh, your anxiety, they don't, they, you, you are here, you know, you, you put your level up here now. So like whatever happened here, it doesn't matter, you know, because you got stronger. And Tesla had uh, had uh, had had a few of these. Like he had when he when he started working uh, in Paris, because when they figured it out that this guy was amazing in fixing things, he was the only one fixing things. And um, and and in the meanwhile, he was working for his. Uh, invention so it was under pressure and then he had a breakdown then another thing happened later and is when marconi won the nobel for the radio and uh, and tesla was super disappointed and uh, another very important thing is uh, his life changed completely just because one event because his life was great like he, his life it was great because if you think about in 1893, he became like probably the most famous person in the world while, when he enlightened the uh, uh, Chicago Expo. And because literally people for the first time, they saw like this big uh, uh, place light on with artificial lights in the, in the night. And even the the... American president was there and he had a speech. So then when he organized, designed literally the Niagara implant, he basically uh, provide that he taught people how to provide energy to everybody, electricity with this invention. And uh, so his life was great till 1912. In 1912, basically in 1910, for 10 years, his life was destroyed. Uh, in 1910, his best friend died, which is what, which was Mark Twain. And and I come back to what I was saying before, like it's very important to surround yourself with uh, people that actually trigger your, you know, your creativity and your like, that they engage you, you know. And he had few of them, and and Mark Twain died, and uh, Westinghouse, his main uh, uh, investor, basically, was Westinghouse at that point. He died, same same here, and then uh, he had another friend that he became his major investor at that time. That he was John Jacob Astor, the one that the uh, uh, build the chain of the um, Astoria hotels that they are still all around the world now. And uh, so what happened? 1912, the Titanic, uh, the, the Titanic uh, uh, sank. And uh, on that uh, on that um, boat that was on top, this John Jacob Astor. So Tesla. In in one in in few hours, he lost his major uh, investor, and because Titanic was one of the first three ships with a radio radio device from Marconi, uh, when they launched the SOS message, like another ship uh, reached Carpathia, that it was actually traveling from New York to Rijeka in Croatia. So th this is like. It's crazy also all this coincidence. So the, the other ship was going to to Croatia and they saved 700 passengers from the Titanic. So when the, when the, this 
this boat came back to New York, he was Marconi that he was celebrated. Because uh, we, we have to thank Marconi about the fact that he invented this radio device with Tesla invention patents, but for the ships. So what is important about Marconi that maybe he wasn't a great scientist, but he was very creative and it and he, and he, he realized that hey, maybe if I put this device on boat, this is very useful, you know, uh, because both that time they, they were uh, traveling blind, blind. So like when a, when a boat leave, uh, lived like uh, Liverpool to New York for three weeks, you don't know like where this boat is. That's how it was before Marconi. And so Tesla was completely uh, forgotten. But there's no more Tesla, like radio is Marconi. He saved all these people and uh, and it's crazy. Like this is uh, what I call the the cross destinies they had, the fate that they cross because like two great scientists, I can say, and one disappear to uh, for the success, the success of, yeah. of the other one. Uh, and it's crazy. Other coincidences on this event are, so the Carpathia boat that is going to Croatia, actually to Dalmatia, where, where Tesla was from, and he saved all these passengers. And also, one of the main sponsors of Titanic, it was the Jameson distillery, the Jameson whiskey, the Irish whiskey. And uh, Marconi, Marconi's mom, was the daughter of Jameson, so Marconi was already rich because like his father was a nobleman from uh, from Bologna and his, his mother was instead uh, uh, the daughter of this guy that they had like the biggest distillery in the world. And uh, and it's crazy, you know, it just like life is supposed to to happen, you know. Poor Tesla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and he's still, he's still, uh, I actually, when I research his life like deep, I still don't know how this, this guy could, could die poor in, in poverty because like he had many patents. He had almost 300 patents in like, in like more than 10 countries, right? So money supposed to flow. And, and before dying in 43, he, he was he had many many companies under his name and he was uh, giving consultation for mostly t turbines so i i have no idea like what he used to do with money because he wasn't paying the hotels where he li where he lived but like he wasn't going out either like so i don't know he really didn't care about money he i read really that he he when when he died he left many bills not beds but I would not imagine that he never bid throughout his life. So maybe maybe there were some some bills not paid after his death, but not for the whole of his life he did not pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I know he was for sure using 90% of his income for his uh, experiments and to build these devices, but like still you you had some copyrights by by the 30s because before there were no copyrights so like it was it was weird but also some sources of his biography says that he he had the, to sell the patents to 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 other companies and so in order to be able to get money to to spend on his experiment and his forthcoming ideas yeah, which means that he didn't have much money to to survive with, as as he was uh, as he ended up with uh, selling his patents to some companies. Yeah, and not, uh, uh, maybe like he should have uh, copyrighted his surname, because nowadays, as you, as, as you said at the introduction, like there are many companies with the name of Tesla, like they're Tesla. When yeah. you said Tesla cars, 
uh, yeah, this is the most famous, but like I can list is crazy. Like in Serbia, there is like Ser- like Tesla uh, dentist clinic, you know, and then there is, for example, the the main uh, phone, um, not phone company, the like mobile phone uh, brand. It's called Tesla, you know. And and it is fun because if an American friend of mine bought one of these Tesla, they look very nice, a smartphone. And he broke after two weeks and he said and he said to me, you know, like the fact that it's called Tesla, it doesn't mean he designed it. <laughs> yeah, and it's true. And there are many. Uh, the other day we changed a piece, like a spare part of a car here. And uh, and it's about uh, it's a it's a, it's an electric part, and it was and the brand was Tesla from Czech Republic, the brand. So it's like uh, yeah, it's like Coca Cola. It should have it should have uh, copyrighted just the name, you know. <laughs> yeah, but again, if you if you look from a positive side, I, I would I would be uh, happy that uh, a name of a scientist is. Um, let's say, celebrated in his own uh, country and also over all the world. This is a good a good sign, especially, for example, if you see the, the uh, picture of a scientist on uh, the banknote of a country where other countries used to, to put uh, the picture of uh, their uh, military heroes, uh, their presidents, uh, their late martyrs, for example, which is also acceptable. But to put a, a picture or a portrait of a scientist, for example, to celebrate a scientist who passed away years ago, this is a, a good uh, gesture of celebrating science also. And uh, I don't like that uh, Tesla became like a political uh, icon now. For example, like Croatia now joined the yeah, it was in the EU, but now it joined also the euro area. So like they changed currency. And the first thing they wanted to do and they, they did is like uh, they they uh, I think I can say like printed like a 50 cent coin with the Nikola Tesla face. Oh. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's very like this is and complete. maybe that's made Serbia angry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because like uh, as I said, it's a sad. As I said before, it's a sad story because uh, during the the Nazism, the 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 Nazi troops from Croatia they were called the Ustasje, and they actually lied on fire the church of uh, of his father. They destroyed all the graves there, and they deported all people with the surname of Tesla to Yazenova's concentration camp. And that's why nowadays there's nobody with this surname. OK, so this is a sad story. And uh, so I change completely already. I wanted to, t- to tell you another thing that nobody knows. So it's not an as I said before, to me it sounded like an Italian name. Right, it's definitely is not uh, is not uh, a Balkan name, let's say, because it doesn't end in each, right? It's not Andrich or Mikhailovich or Stankovic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's Tesla. But, also, but I think also non- non-Italian name. It sounds like Italian, but, but, but it's not, not exactly. Because yeah. if he's Italian, he would be Nicolo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicola, but by the way, one, one of the of the attendees supposed to be an Italian student. His name Nicolo, but I got a message from him. He didn't manage to attend, uh-huh. so his name is Nicolo. Mm-hmm. So, but but still, and Nicolo in Italian, you you write it with C, right? Yeah, but yes. but but I mean the surname also sounds Italian, right? Yes, the surname sounds yes. And he and he hands with the vowel and like. In Serbia, it's not like that. It's like Andrich, Stankovic, Mikhailovic, and uh, and I research even that. Like basically, his uh, his family actually had another name, like Blagojevic. But uh, like you have to go like very long time ago, and uh, and you know it was already like it was still the time when 
maybe like some particularities of your family would give you like a nickname and this nickname at some point would be recorded as a as a surname and that's what happened so his family all of them they had kind of like the, the two incisive tooth here they were a bit like this right like going a bit out that's why he, he was he was growing mustache and in the pic in the picture he never show his teeth Right, it's always like with the mouth closed. You even said this. The, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Tesla is the name in Serbian for you know the hammer, the one that you can take the 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 nail out. That is like this, and that was a nickname for his family, Tesla, and okay. that became Tesla. But Tesla is the name of this hammer. Okay. Nobody knows this really nobody so you by by telling this details about the name then you answered a question that would be what first uh, caught your attention uh, towards the story of, of tesla so the first thing that caught your attention was his name yeah it was his name because when i checked the name and uh, i was like ah, i thought he, i thought he was italian and then i read then I found his name in Croatian. Then I read it wasn't even Croatian; it was Serbian. And I said, "Like this is there is a story behind here because why everybody, you know, is even taking." And now Americans they call him the American scientist. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if they want to show that they are uh, honest, they say the American Serbian scientist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, there was. Uh, a raised hand, uh, Zena, or somebody yes, else? Yes, was me. Zena. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I wanted to ask you about your uh, architectural career. Uh, first, uh, my name is Zena. Zena, studying engineering, the University uh, of Jordan. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, how did you think of the change of, of career? Again? I mean, uh, you know, when you see your uh, work in uh, in art and physics, uh, will you ever yeah, leave architecture uh, for granted? And you, will you leave it all, all of it? Uh, Let's say, have you uh, left it? Uh, what what uh, I, I don't know if I got right the the meaning of the question like if I so I just tell you like I I join architecture and I finish architecture so like I'm actually an architect right but I never work as an architect like I work uh, for a year in Germany as interior designer and I quit being an architect because so you of did the, quit yeah because the feeling I never liked a single architect in my life. Like, uh, I don't know, it's not my, the person really, like the way they become, <laughs> like, uh, I don't like it. And uh, and so I was surrounded by these these people for some times at university. At that point, uh, uh, at some point I said like, why I even try to do that? I don't like even the, you know, the community of architects, you know. So you, you, you found it not your place? It's, it's definitely not my place. Like, uh, no, like uh, it, it's about the, you know, the way they are, most of them like showing off, you know, and like always in suit and uh, and every, I always say like every single architect thinks he's the best architect in the world. They're like, how comes, you know, like they're, they're so confident, you know, and like they're not humble at all. Like, uh, like say, I'm the best one. Like, why? Like you didn't do anything yet, you know? It's like this all the university period and then after and then I said no 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 I just have to change path yeah yeah that's why we I say I'm a sorry we have yes, this negative energy. we have this negative energy as an architect we are so proud of everything we do <laughs> you are an architect I am <laughs> uh sorry I didn't want I didn't want to offend anybody like <laughs> no no it's the truth but you know what i mean right you know what i mean of course yeah, yeah. showing off at the submission 
it's part of the 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 chemistry in the in the profession. Yeah. And you know who is very very cool? Very I... very cool is comic artist. Uh, believe me, believe me. Like I'm not a, a comic artist for a long time, and I met like famous people now, like in the last year, like real real comic artists. These people is just amazing, you know. They stay with everybody. They never talk about how good I am, you know. Like I did this, I did that. No, they are just. They are talk about how this thing is good, how this is nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a uh, super fun. I don't know if Zena uh, has other uh, questions. Zena, I'm, I'm good. You are OK. OK, if, 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 if no, then I have a question related to Zena question. Um, so now I understand that you um, didn't find yourself in uh, the architecture community. Uh, but what did you get out of studying architecture? A, a lot, a what, lot. What, remain, what remained in your personality, in your character, in your career that you learned from being an architect? So uh, it, it's what I was saying before. Again, and like all comes to, to a point, like to cross your knowledge, right? To have a wide spectrum of knowledge that is like different. Like for example, maybe you like like cooking and like you find something about cooking that you can use in physics or like it's crazy, but it's like that. For example, uh, what I say about architecture, it's a lot of things. For example, my knowledge of drawing perspective without, you know, because I, I did with, uh, with CAD software and before uh, at school, you know, with the China pen, China ink pen, and like, and the knowledge of how it works, like an environment, right, on a, on a bi-dimensional support like paper, and so I I know like to draw by heart without having reference, right, and this comes from the artistic part of studying architecture, and this is a big point, and then. Uh, the history of architecture, it was very important to me because like uh, knowing exactly, uh, uh, knowing exactly what was going on in that period, historical, like in a specific, uh, specific period of time and what was the architecture that time and the technology, right? And like my book is, a, is also, you can see that because the period of Tesla, is uh, he, he lived in, in one period that I would like to live, right? That is, uh, is the Art Nouveau period. So like you can imagine Tesla environment when he was, for example, living in Paris. So there were a lot of scientists. It was industrial revolution. And so everything was just happening that time or everything, everything in engineering, in architecture, and uh, everything that was technological, but in the same time, and people never like uh, rarely makes this connection, is the same time that you could go and get a coffee and meet Renoir painting or Monet painting in Paris, like there in the corner, right? Like the impressionist or like, and it's crazy. Like that's the time he lived in. So, and, uh, if I didn't study architecture, I wouldn't know all these things, right? I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know, for example, another thing that that I'm sure Tesla was impressed, because when he visited the Expo in Paris, 1889, is the is the Expo when they build the Tour Eiffel. So the Tour Eiffel goes up up uh, like over 300 meters. It was like the biggest structure in the world. And it was made out of, uh, of course, like it's, it's steel, right? But I know that Tesla, he went there to meet uh, a guy, I don't remember the name, another physicist that explained him a lot of things. He uh, he visited all the, all the expo for like a week. And I know he was impressed by the Tour Eiffel because he, at that point he knew that- You mean um, 
Evil Tower, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. At that so point, the is uh, Italian word. The the what? The, the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Tour. Turi. Tour. Uh, I said Tour Eiffel, like it's French. Yeah. Okay. So the point is, he knew at that time that the engineering reached the point he could use for his invention, and that's why he thought like I, I can transfer Wi-Fi energy from one point to the other because now I can reach the ionosphere with like a big tower like that. And uh, if I if I didn't study architecture, I wouldn't think through, you know, and put this in the story. It's not that Tesla wrote that, but I'm pretty sure that it's like that, right? Because like how you you can think about uh, the tower he built in New York, if you didn't see reticular structure like it is, uh, it is the Tour Eiffel, like he knew that and it was, it was like uh, his knowledge was like three, uh, 360 degrees, like he was interested in everything, in everything, because he knew that everything could be useful, you know, like observing a flower, obse observing like a tower or like and like inspiration and creativity can come from whatever it's it's unbelievable maybe you see flying a fly and and you get oh wow like maybe it, it, it's uh, it's like that yeah so you think that he as a scientist as any scientist should be he was uh curious about everything surrounding him yeah, I believe that if you want to trick your creativity, first of all, you have to push yourself to be a, a good observer. Right? A good observer. Like, look what's going on around you. Like, you know. I right. always say it's not an excuse to, to, to say that I did not observe. Because yeah. you have to observe. Everything is going around you, even if it's not in the circle of your interest. If yeah. you want to be a scientist, you should be a good observer. It's not an excuse to say, I did not observe. I did not expect that this would be important to observe. You have to observe it first, and then you don't know when this will ignite an idea in your mind. Yeah, and also, I would say there's there's no such thing of, because, because you know, I wasn't like this all my life. Actually, I was like very anxious. I'm st I still hard, but I was like not confident at all, right? And uh, and uh, I really believe that you have to. Uh, so things don't happen that it's like by accident, right? Nothing happened by accident on on this on this world. Like it just you move yourself. And things starts moving around you, like it's it's like again, like it's a physical law. So it's a, it's how it is. So you cannot pretend like uh, you shouldn't say like maybe I'm gonna be a good scientist, right? And what they were like it's it's not something that happened to you. Nothing. It's not something that happened to you. Like you definitely can be like a good scientist, a great scientist. You just have to keep working every day for to be to become a great scientist and you will reach that. And you will reach that and like you want to be a good cook and have like a Michelin star in your restaurant. Yeah, work hard, practice and that's and, and keep focusing on your, your on your goal and then you reach it. It's it's, it's the way it is. It's not because I remember like at university, I had like some hard times and uh, and I was like, who knows, like if I ever become like if I ever that if I ever get the degree, it's like, yeah, you get the degree, just study an exam by exam, then you get the degree. But I thought that things happen to you, but it's not true. You know, yeah, like this. Uh, shall we shall we open the floor again for questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, anybody wanted to come in or ask? Uh, 
the audience. Uh, thank you uh, for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Daniel, and thank you, Dr. Hanan, for this uh, uh, for this interview. Uh, I just want to um, to comment that um, the life uh, story of uh, Nikola Tesla is uh, very uh, dramatic and uh, full uh, of struggles. And just I have uh, one question that. Um, uh, we as um, young scientists and young engineers, um, uh, what uh, what is your advice that we can uh, learn from Nikola Tesla? Nikola and why Tesla. You not uh, introduce yourself. Um, yes, sorry. My name is uh, Ruba Hassan. Uh, I'm a physics student at the University of Jordan, and I am a member uh, of Lambda Group uh, Physics Group. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. And uh, so his life is full of good messages. And that's why and that's why like I uh, I, w I was uh, motivated for two years to keep going and like draw these books and write and research because like it's, you know, to keep to keep concentrated on a project, it, it's tough, you know, and uh, but again, you focus on the goal. I want this book and you reach. So there are a lot of messages. The one I like the most. Um, so first of all, like I like one quote out of all like the all the hundreds quotes by by Tesla. There is one uh, that is the last one on my book. That is the one I like the most because he says uh, that out of like of all things, I liked books best. And this is super important, right? Like because it, it means like he liked to keep uh, feeding his brain with whatever that was this written. This was the first thing I read in your book. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Also, how he put down, and uh, because he had this like very amazing life, exciting, and still the best. Everything came from books. He was a great reader. So the big message from his life. Is like to work on something that is for the community. If you work for yourself, you're never gonna reach anything. Like so, like dig under the ground your ego. Ego is not in interesting. Like you work for the community that can be like the world, right? And then even like the things that happen will push you there because you do for a for a good reason and it, and it's true like uh, i believe like physics is based on this you know like and uh, it's just a tool right like physics is a tool right that you use it's a language that you use to explain things that happen otherwise anyways so his message is, is it's very important because tesla really didn't care about money Right, so I don't know, like maybe they stole it from him money. That's why he was in in poverty completely. And uh, this is the big difference with Edison. He worked all his life to provide energy wireless to all the world because he knew that if we quit um, um, fossil resources like oil and gas and uh, he was he was thinking this like almost two centuries ago, and he I think already. He preceded his time. Yeah, sorry. He preceded his time. Yeah, with yeah, his yeah. Ideas. Yeah, he could he could he could read like how how like the behavior of people, like what could uh, what could you know uh, take us to and and he was right. So his main. Um, uh, like he pay attention, like 80% of his attention to provide energy worldwide for free because he said I can do it for free, like using the ionosphere. And because if we reach this, there's no war anymore. You are right. right? This is the the best message from from him. And, and I think this like, message is, is valid for all times and particularly for our time nowadays. Yeah, yeah. These those who have the power who have uh, the fuel, who have the electricity, 
are the people who are ruling our lives. Yeah. In terms of science, economics, uh, all aspects of our life are, are ruled by, by those who have the, this yeah. power, unfortunately. By the people that have a strong ego and they want just to monetize on everything, you know. It's like yeah. exactly the opposite of what you should aim to be. Yeah. Like, and then you reach your goals. These people are weak. They want to have this ego and they monetize. Of course. They don't know what happiness is. They think yeah, they're they happy. They don't know what happiness is. Yes. No, because they think they're happy because they buy like five cars, right? No, I, I'm sure they. I'm sure they. They don't feel happy. Yeah. I'm sure. Most of you them they just less don't in know. Hand, you could have less in hand, but give more by heart. And then you 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 truly understand what is happiness. I I, I also second on your uh, on your uh, comment about what message of life of Tesla life that he was digging the ground to make something for the community. I would also add this is what I I I learned from your uh, novel also from your uh, presentation that although Tesla was digging the ground to do something good for the community. He also was, uh, let's say, uh, um, facing troubles from this community because the, the, the place that we are living in is not, uh, is not uh, an ideal uh, environment. You could find the businessman, you could find the politician, you could find the bad merchant. You couldn't find all these in the community, but he didn't care about what these bad guys were doing and were putting obstacles in his path. He was just keep going and he was just focusing on his aim, on his dream, on his goals. So then afterwards, eventually he got uh, recognized. He got appreciated. So this is also the complete message. It's not that you dig in the ground to help the community. This help of the community could be in your career as a student, as a, as, a, as a teacher, as a researcher, as a scientist, as a lawyer, as an artist, as an author. But the idea is that when you work for the community, don't expect that those people in the community will all, uh, let's say, clap their hands for you. You will find also many of people who are putting obstacles in your way because they think the good that you do is revealing their their uh, their bad uh, uh, manner. So it, yeah. it's like it's like it's like a war. So work for the community, but don't expect thank from anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you want to provide something for free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Arwa, Arwa wanted. Uh, to yeah, to yeah, I have or a ask again. Yes, Arua. Uh, regarding um, Nikola Tesla trying to make electricity for free, I think I once read something, but I'm not sure if it's 100% um, true or not. The reason why he's poor is actually because he tried to convince the United States government that the electricity should be free. I'm not sure if it's a true story or not, but yeah, this is. The reason that he was poor because he tried to convince them. Yeah, that electricity should be uh, for free. He kept paying on uh, like from his own money for um, on projects that to make to build something electric that can provide for like he, he believed that electricity should be um, available for everyone free. And to build that he needed tools and materials, but um, nobody but helped he, him. But he was not funded. Money. Yeah, he, he had to pay it from his um, own wallet. So this is why he was poor. I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if it's true or not because uh, the source is uh, like uh, I don't trust it. So yeah, I think it could be because we, we live uh, similar challenges. I would say in in uh, let's say in Jordan and in the region where we live, and unfortunately. Uh, the budget that is dedicated for scientific research is minimal, which is a shame, of course. But also compared to the economical situation, it's expect expected. 
So what's the choice? Either you quit uh, doing research or you pay from your pocket. And this is what we do. And then instead of being uh, recognized for that or, or uh, let's say, um, uh, braved for that, you could get punished for that. Why did you pay from your pocket? Why didn't you ask permission, for example? So I would imagine that he, he, he also paid from his pocket uh, to make his dream uh, a reality. Yeah, yeah, he used all his money like for his uh, for his uh, test. All of it was invested in in that. Like he would eat like nothing, like onion and and a piece of bread, and just or just like don't eat like for days, just to buy maybe some copper for his uh, for his uh, test. But uh, also like you you know you know that uh, that U.S. government like push him down at some point because. Because Edison was much bigger and it was already like a state company, right? And it was huge. Like before Tesla became famous, they had already, they were already providing electricity in Europe. So, and actually Tesla worked as a young guy in uh, in uh, Edison company in Paris and in Strasbourg. So uh, the point is like when he tries to explain that the AC was much better for like many reasons, one of the reasons is that it would be cheaper because like there were no wasting in, wasting in energy in the power. and so like less in plants and then less people working and digging to to cover the wire you know and it was a better aesthetically a much more elegant solution is solution because you have to imagine that when edison uh, started electrifying like New York, all like he needed like like a million times more wires than uh, than AC. So like the streets of New York, they became sh shadowed by the cables, right? And so then they decided we have to dig holes and put all these wires underground. But like people really don't know like from where your cable, like your wire come from, right? And uh, and Tesla was laughing about this because he was sure, you know, like we do like this, there's so much less pain, you know, in uh, in in this. And um, yeah, and that's when when he said, like he he figured that actually Edison was was an entrepreneur, but he was an ignorant guy. It was like a redneck from the countryside because, like. Why you you do this? Like he was like very hot head Edison. Edison knew that the, this solution was better, but because it it didn't come from him, he wouldn't he wouldn't push that. And he actually started like a crazy propaganda against against AC, like killing animals in the street with AC. And yeah, it was crazy. It was like another time, you know, it's another world. It was cruel. It was cruel. No rules. Yeah, he Just showed no. his bad face at that moment. Yeah, yeah. Just to make the idea of uh, of uh, Tesla looks like uh, a bad idea. Yeah. Because it would replace his companies and his projects and most important, his income as yeah. a businessman as a producer of the electricity. And and you can see these messages we were talking about before that if you f if you focus on your ego, you become a bad person because Edison eventually he was a bad person. Like he didn't have uh, friends because he was like a very acidic person. And then he came to the point that he was killing animals in the street to prove a point that, they, that he knew he was wrong. And uh, like out of the invention of Edison, did, made, there is one that nobody ever say, that is the electric chair. Electric chair is an Edison invention, and the electric chair works with AC. And when they tested, like the first man that died like that, it was terrible, it was 1896, but actually like, Edison tried to prove that you get like you know barn in a second, and instead it took hours. And and so it, it's crazy, you see. But you you can you can read you can read the fact. 
that uh, yeah, if you focus on your ego and on monetizing, you you're not gonna become like a good person. Like there's no way. Agree. Other questions? Other interruptions? Either you continue in your slides or I ask question. You can ask can question. You? Yeah, my slide. Uh, I can show you the slides, but like uh, I, I have a, a list of questions. Yeah, some some through my reading of the novel, some uh, uh, just showed up now through this discussion, and some I got through email. Uh huh. Okay. But also, I prefer to hear to hear from you if you still have some slides. Maybe you, you I, I, can, I, got, I can just show you this. Uh, it's like uh, what, I, what I said so far, but I just wanted uh, to show you how uh, how big how big and engaging was the Tesla life because like so he started you can see on the left in uh, in Europe and he traveled a lot like he you know he worked in the different places and he was very motivated to to build this uh, AC motor, but in Europe still he couldn't find the open-minded uh, uh, community, and so he went to the U.S. and he, in the U.S. you can see he traveled around more than that because he used to go to attend conferences, and so he went there. Uh, I show you this and. Uh, uh, just to add something uh, crazy, like it was, it was very unluck, unlucky. When he traveled to US, he got stolen by his luggages, and uh, the only thing that saved during the trip to go to US, it was this recommendation letter that the bachelor from Edison Company in Paris wrote to him. And but th this was like literally, I think, in his underpants, like it's the only thing he saved, you know. And then when he met uh, Edison, it was very disappointing because, like, despite the recommendation letter, Edison like started uh, mobbing him. This is another point. Like it was, I think, one of the first cases in the world of mobbing on the uh, on on the job, right, on the working place, because Ed Edison like made his life. Uh, like uh, miserable in the lab like he was saying like everything was wrong while like he knew that he was everything making everything was correct yeah and it was better than what he what he had in mind uh, yeah this is uh, basically the pages on the book wh when wh where I picture this and um, this is a uh, Westinghouse it was very important this is uh, I just show you, you know, like this. And uh, another thing that I found funny that maybe like people don't think about is that uh, when he went to Colorado Springs, he had some problems with the with the people there because during his experiments, <laughs> a, a couple of times he, he he lied off the whole the whole uh, town like. Because we we did electricity like he used too much and like so he had like uh, how do you say uh, counter circuit I don't know like a crash in the system so like they couldn't have electricity in the town for a week because of Tesla experiment like something that went wrong and like it happened twice in a year and he had to leave you know because otherwise they would they would kill him literally and I was thinking like. What? So this means, but also that one cannot be successful the whole way. Yeah, yeah, you cannot, you cannot. And what is funny is that I was thinking like, what kind of people were, were like at, in that period, right? 1898, 1899 in Colorado, right? And then I thought like, these were cowboys, right? It's like, they were all cowboys. What we have in mind as a cowboy, and like you can imagine, like this guy having like crazy experiments, like having like lamps on the ground, like towers, and like uh, triggering lightning, and 
you're surrounded by cowboys with guns, with pistols, <laughs> like that they see they see uh, you like I, an enemy. I wanted to, to interrupt you, Daniele. Uh, about this, what was your source of this uh, story about uh, his experience in Colorado? Uh, so, uh, well, was I, it uh, was it mentioned in his uh, autobiography or uh, other resources? So, uh, um, um, so I read all the books about Tesla. Right, Th there are many. Uh, I mean maybe not all of them because like some are very repetitive repetitive right uh, there is a there is a great book uh, that it was written by uh, this guy that was the director of the nikola tesla museum in belgrade and he worked there for 30 years and so he made like a very very thick book with all his research for 30 years so so there is a lot of things Nobody ever in any book said how these people from Colorado Springs look like. But so, of course, it's like the cowboy time. So it's the end of 19th century. This is the cowboy time in US. Yes, but I mean, what happened to Tesla? That he failed it twice. And yeah. then the city remained without electricity for a week or so. This was mentioned by Tesla himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. By Tesla I himself. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned even. So th this is this is good, I would say, that that he was honest to tell this in in his interviews and in in his uh, let's say autobiography. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. To show that everything went well, everything he did was for fantastic. That he mentioned these points of weakness, let's say. Yeah, yeah, he said like he. I, failed. I don't consider it weakness, but but it happens. It happens in the experiment. It happens that everything falls down, for example. Yeah. But Tesla was very like he was confident, but he was also modest. Like he would admit, like yeah, something. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Yeah. To to admit mistakes, there is yeah. no research without mistakes. There is no work of any kind without mistakes, and there is no success without mistakes. So it's yeah. nice that he mentioned this. He didn't uh, pretend to. To, to to hide it, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that basically he caused like uh, uh, because he was working with high voltage uh, devices, like the craziest device, and like at some point he shut down the whole town twice, and the second time he had to leave because the mayor literally said like you got you gotta leave, you know, like we cannot go on like this. And he left, he stayed 11 months. Like, he's very famous, like this part of his life that he that he lived in Colorado Springs. And, and I thought like maybe he lived there like five years. No, no, instead it was 11 months. It was sufficient to be kicked out. So there were many periods in, in, in his life we, where he quit. Yeah. Right? It's the main part of his life is quitting. Yes, sometimes, sometimes by uh, not by his choice. Let's say he, he was kicked out, but other times it was his choice to quit the yeah. situation. I like particularly when he quitted the work of uh, the work with um, Edison, when Edison lied on him, when he promised him if he solved such a problem or if he produced uh, this. Uh, this stuff or make this mission, he would gain, I think, something like 10th or I don't remember the, the amount, thousands dollars. Yeah, yeah. And for that purpose, and because uh, Tesla is a human, so he needs, uh, he has dreams, he has needs, he has plans, so he needs the money to, to invest in these situations. He kept working days and nights in order to to make this mission and he did it and he did it in uh, in the least possible time and also in the most uh, let's say the nicest way so he did it perfectly and yeah. then when he rushed to to edison and the managers and so they were laughing on him and and they said you don't understand we are american and we are joking yeah and he decided to resign to quit. to quit 
and oh, it's very I, I respect him that he that he's he did this it's very important to know when is the time to quit also right in your life because like if you want to find your own way like you need to know how to quit what you're doing in that and when is the right time more or less so quitting is nothing that should be seen as uh like mm, something you should be blamed for you know no yes. quitting is a part of your uh how to say your development definitely yeah yeah it was nice that he did it by he, he of course it was sad that he ended up with this decision that he was lied on by edison but also it was nice that he did his uh, this decision by himself and also that he started again from scratch. Yeah. So he did not give up. Yeah, many times, all his life. He never, never gave up. Yeah, never. When he was 87, he was still doing the same, like trying to get back on, on something, so. Any other questions? Lambda, Arwa, Nauras. Muhammad Abbas from Pakistan. Anyone interested in questions or comments? I just have one comment. Yes, Arwa. I, I really like the drawings. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, you like the drawings. Yeah. Although you saw them on the, the screen. What if you have the book in your hands? Uh, I can yeah, tell I'm... you that the book in itself is uh, very, uh, very attracting. It's really captivating. Yeah, I can tell. It's like when you read it, like you are watching a movie. Mm -hmm. well, um, there's the um, Japanese drawings. Uh, I forgot what they call them. Uh, what are what? The Japanese drawings. Um, yes. I forgot what they call them, but I'm not a I'm not a fan of. Um, uh, like manga. Uh, yeah, manga, manga. Exactly. Manga, manga, I think. Yeah, when I when I saw, when I saw your. But that's drawing, yeah, another saw... another kind of of art. Yeah, exactly. But, but, uh, but Daniela. What, right? It's a bit of a different style, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's it's a bit different style. It's by the way, by the way, uh, Lambda Physics Group hosted previously uh, an author who uh, wrote um, a scientific story, a scientific story about special relativity, and uh, she she was a physicist and a storyteller, and uh, she was very much interested in mangaka, and I I think she's working on that. If you go back, Arwa, uh, to the previous announcement of uh, Lambda at Lambda website or at Lambda YouTube uh, channel, you will find uh, that webinar about uh, a story about it was the story was called The Carpet of Light. It's about special relativity and it was uh, authored by a physicist. And probably at this stage, this was years ago. Uh, probably at this stage, this physicist, I, uh, what I know, is very much interested in this art of mangaka. She has uh, another uh, novel, and she's working on converting this novel into the mangaka style. I don't know how, how to call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in comics. Yes, Daniele. No, I was just saying, like in comic world, there are like. I would say like three main styles that is like the American comic books, you know, like that style, like superhero, very like uh, uh, dynamic and like uh, action, action, you know, like they need action and explosion and all this stuff. And then there is like uh, Italian style, like Sergio Bonelli, it's like Tex Wheeler. If somebody saw like it's different, it's, like it's, it's nicer, it's black and white. And then there is the manga, the Japanese. Yeah. And then there is people like me that we are like, let's say, independent. And um, we are independent just because we don't want to work for uh, main 
Uh, I mean, if they hire me, maybe I would say yes and then quit, but <laughs> just to try. But uh, yeah, when you work for these people, like you have a standard to respect, right? And you wouldn't, you, like you would draw or you would ink or you would color, like not the three things. And the story is somebody else. And instead, like, I don't want, like, I'm not, I'm not engaged of doing something that they tell me to do. Like, I prefer, like, to take a story that I like and make my, my own comic. And so, because of that, I have freedom of, of style. So, maybe the next book is not going to be watercolor and it's going to be black and white. I don't know. So, just... And this again, uh, talking about uh, your graphic novel about Nikola Tesla, and also recalling the previous event that was held by Lambda about uh, this uh, story of carpet flight, which was written by uh, a physicist. I would like to, to highlight that uh, studying physics or physics or science, all sciences, not only physics, but let, let me talk about physics as a physicist, I think Physics and sciences need all kinds of people. They don't only need uh, physicists or scientists or academics. In order to disseminate the beauty of physics, you need all kinds of people. You need, you need storytellers. You need comic artists. You need graphic designers. You need the engineers. You need academics. You need students also. You need lab technicians, you need historians, people who tell the history of science, artists who show the, the beauty of science. So again, being a scientist doesn't mean being isolated. Unfortunately, scientists and physicists learn this lesson the hard way and learn it uh, a bit late, I would say, because we grew up as uh, studying science or doing physics as a hard subject, as a subject that needs all your focus, all your concentration. That's uh, true to, to, to go well in your study, to go outside your textbook, to explore by yourself, but that's not enough. Physics and science needs all kinds of people, need historian, artists, storytellers, uh, technicians, engineers, all kinds of, of fields. So as much as you are open to other kinds of fields, as much as you can gain more expertise, even in your own field, because you would have a new vision while talking with those outsiders. It's not always the only way to solve a problem is to go to through ABC procedure. Sometimes it's a good way to discuss it with someone who's outside the field, who's non-science major, in order to see another perspective, in order to look from another point uh, of view. So again, matching all these together is one of uh, our goals in Lambda. We think that this is one of the things that helps uh, to, uh, that help to, to, to enhance the way how to educate physics and how to educate science. It's not only the textbook, it's not only the lab, this does not underestimate the role of the lecture or the textbook or the lab, but it aims to reinforce the, the, their role and also to, to highlight the value of science, the value uh, of physics. Um, I don't know if anybody else have questions. I, I can, I can double check my list to see if something was not uh, covered. Um, you told us, Daniele, why you got uh, the first uh, attention and the first interest in Nicola's life. But uh, I don't know if we can ask you why you, cho you, you, you chose a physicist or it happens by chance or what. When you, when you decided that you will make your graphic novel, why you chose a physicist, regardless that he's Nicola, Nicola Tesla? Why didn't you uh, utilize your, your art in reviving um, the life of another distinguished uh, figure. There are many heroes in, in, in over all ages. Why, why to focus on a physicist? 
It's not because he's a physicist, it's because like his life was very engaging and even the period, historical period is like a period I really like. And uh, and there was this gap um, that in Italy we don't know Tesla and that uh, in other comic books is completely, uh, is like nobody knows that Tesla was actually Serbian and all the things he passed through. So for me, I wanted to, Actually, the, the, my last goal is to have this book translated into, into Italian and published in Italy. So that was the idea. And uh, so, so, so to cover this gap. And it's not that I chose because he, he was a, a physicist, but it because like his life was very interesting to me. And, uh, and it's very hard to find other, uh, other subject I would like to to, to, to make a, a biography because it's not easy. It's not easy to find the one that keep you focused and concentrated and motivated okay. you. This comes to uh, uh, my other question. I would ask it then I will take uh, the, the, the comment from who's raising his hand. Uh, my second question related to this, I would like to ask you who's next? I don't know. Like, okay. I, uh, are you open I for, for potential candidates? Do you want help so we could suggest for you? I have uh, I have three books in mind. That there three are books about three three. Uh, it's not biography. Figures or what? There is one figure that is very uh, very secretive and like mysterious, which is like not a scientist, but he was a dictator actually. And it was Tito. Who's the guy? Tito. Who? The Yugoslavian dictator, Tito. Okay. Yeah, because you, because he had a, a very, very crazy life. And actually people don't even know where he was coming from because like he was speaking Serbian Croatian with an accent, you know, everybody say so. And okay. then I have, Another book is about my experience of seven years in uh, in Serbia. That I'm gonna make that, and uh, and another one is uh, is about some people from my region here, from Friuli, that they came from the mountains and they went to work to Russia to build uh, the Trans Siberian Rail. And they stand there, they stay there because like they died before this Trans Siberian was was finished. Okay. So and there is a community of people basically, let's say with my genetics, like from my region, with name and surname similar there in Russia, but they don't speak a single word of Italian or my dialect. Because it's like three generations away. And it's and it's and it's a a, a cool story to so you have many many plans in put this back yeah, yeah yeah but still you did not answer my question or maybe i didn't put it in the proper way i asked who's next let me ask it in another way whose scientist will be next which scientist will be next if if you if you you had the chance to revive another uh, a biography of another scientist in such an idea, graphic novel. I would like to research uh, Mileva Einstein. That is the first wife of Einstein. And she was a physicist too. And uh, they say that, she, and she was Serbian also. Physicist, not mathematician? Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, know, I think it was a, she was a physicist too. Okay. And they say she contributes a lot about uh, Einstein work. But like, you know, like she's not she's not famous, like so you need to go to archives and research like what she actually did, but she was a genius too, so. Yeah, but again, also in science media play, plays um, a huge role. You see how much the figure of Einstein is recognized. Yeah. For also, also Thomas Edison is recognized, but for example, figures like Tesla, like Faraday, they did not get the uh, the, re the recognition that they uh, they, deserve, they deserve yeah. from the media. 
So I think for that reason, she was not, uh, she was not known. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, there are, there are, there are a lot of stories that I would like to put out there, you know? Yeah. If, if you, if you want suggestions, if I'm allowed to, to suggest, I would recommend the life of Mary Curie to put it in a, gra a graphic novel. Yeah. This is an yeah. example. Uh, especially that you will find a lot about her biography because one of her daughters, she has two daughters, one of them scientist who won a Nobel Prize uh, afterwards, and the other one was, I think, journalist. The other one documented uh, the biography of her mother. So there is a book written by her daughter about her life. Also, there are many, many books about the biography of uh, Mary Curie. And uh, probably she, she was uh, even more underestimated than uh, Tesla, because in addition of the, the struggle that she had during her study, uh, let's say she, women were not allowed uh, for studying, so yeah. she's a woman. So this is also another obstacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, yeah. It's I interesting. Also, I would also suggest a third name. By coincidence, she's a female also, by coincidence, but this is what came to my mind. Uh, Rosalind Franklin. Uh -huh. She was also, uh, she did work on uh, the DNA structure and so, and then her ideas were stolen by uh, Watson and Crick. And she died uh, at early age, and she didn't get the recognition that she deserved, although her pictures and her work was used in their first paper about DNA. So there, there are many people, let's say, to put, to put it in one frame. Uh, science is part of the life. So life doesn't give, uh, let's say, um, success in an easy way. So if you read the books about the story life of scientists, you will see that most likely the true scientists are those who suffered a lot. And this suffering was one of the key factors that made them the way they were, the way that they knew them. So suffering was one way to, to, to ignite the, the passion towards science inside them, and also to, to, to revive the soul of overcoming challenges. Uh, Muhammad is raising his hand. Muhammad. Yeah. Hello, I am Muhammad Abbas from um, Department of Physics, Lahore University of Management Sciences from Pakistan. First of all, thank you, Mr. Daniel and uh, Professor Hanan for this beautiful talk. Uh, I want to contribute one thing. Uh, when uh, you said... Um, Can you we, open your uh, camera, Muhammad? Then we see you. Yeah, of course. So, no. Yeah, you can you see me? Now? Yeah. yeah thank Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so, when you said um, um, Tesla was working with a lot of companies and then he ended up in uh, poverty. So, I want to add one thing. Um, what I, can, I know, he was working with, uh, with a company uh, named Electric Corporation of George Washington. And uh, he was taking a reality uh, from that that company, and um, in his bad time, the in the company's bad time, he stopped taking reality, and um, what ends up uh, Tesla in a uh, poverty. And he had a lot of money, uh, although, but he spent all of his money uh, on the on his research, and then he ends up in poverty. So what? Uh, this is the thing I know, and uh, I just want to know. I want to contribute this thing. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you yeah. Also, like I would like to say one thing. You know, like this book is just needs like uh, the 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 goal is like to trigger in people like just the curiosity, right? To research more because like if I have to to show everything about Tesla, this book would be. Um, would be like 20 books <laughs> because it's so full of things that you would like to put there that a lot of things I had to leave behind because 
you cannot explain. Imagine like to explain one thing with with drawings, you know, it's much more. It's much because with words, you can feel a page like with drawings, like you need like thousand drawings. So I had to choose what uh, I didn't, what not to put inside. And it's like a bit sad, but I think it's a good job anyways, because I started with the idea to have like a 100 pages book. Instead it's 200 pages book. And uh, and usually, usually uh, an average, actually the standard of graphic novels is, uh, is a French standard because they are the ones that they basically invented this and the standard for a graphic novel is like 47 page or 64 pages they don't accept more french and uh, for example Marie Curie I know there is a graphic novel but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because it's like it's a graphic novel that doesn't explain anything like it doesn't tell the story because it's like it's 47 pages like so it just it's not a biographical, you know, like also Nikola Tesla graphic novels. There are there is a couple they're they're not like this. They, they show, as I said, they show Nikola Tesla going to Mars. And shooting laser like uh, so. Yeah. But I would say also, uh, Daniele, you said you had uh, to um, to choose what to what. In what to put in the novel and what to exclude. Uh, it, it, it was a good thing that you excluded the, the let's say, the, the, the information that you were not sure about. Because all scientists, not only Nikola Tesla, there are many stories about their lives. Not all these stories uh, were cited well. So some of them were collected like Romer stories. Yeah. So I what I liked in the graphic novel that you excluded such kind of Romer stories. So, for example, about uh, the poverty of um, Nikola Tesla, why he died, why he lived and died poor. You highlighted, and now Muhammad Abbas also highlighted again, and probably Arwa also that he he used to spend on his projects from his own money. So he had to fund his his uh, dreams and and his projects and and his research. So that's why he died poor. But also there are rumors, rumor stories saying that he was poor because when he quit from the university or he quit from the work, he spent the money in gambling. Uh, so Tesla ga gambled in a, in a period of his life. But he, he wasn't when he became famous already. He was before, like he was uh, in. But unfortunately, this is uh, used by some Romers, let's say. And I would guess that as there was a war of currents, it could be part of that war in order to, uh, let's say, to ruin the, the good picture of someone, you just uh, uh, disseminate such stories. Ah, yeah, definitely. Because the same thing happened also for Mary Curie yeah. in another in another side. But there was also Romer stories in, in the media when she was nominated for Nobel Prize for the second time and also for the first time. Some people were angry how a, a, a woman or a female scientist would, won, would win the Nobel Prize and such Romer stories uh, showed up. So I liked that uh, th this was not uh, was not highlighted in, in your novel, although it is mentioned in, in many places in other books and then some places on the website in the media, I would say. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, I wanted to give back to Tesla what he deserves, right? Because like and, and cancel um, these rumors that actually people know as urban legend and they think it's true or like, for example, in Serbia, they they always tell me, ah, you know, like uh, there was this another Serbian physicist that was Mikhailo Pupin. Same story, like he went to US and then he became like he was an, ac uh, an academic, pro like he was a professor, but like Pupin, uh, like he chose, he chose like Edison way, 
like uh, to her money and be more influent like in universities and with the government instead of researching and uh, when he came to the trial for the the radio patent so he witnessed in favor of marconi and he was and he actually like cheated like uh, because he said that everything was made by marconi but because he already signed the pre-contract with Marconi to like ha have to monetize the radio. And uh, and he said publicly that Tesla, he was full, he was mad, like he became crazy, like he was a full guy. Like and after that, like like this rumor spread and like all people th thought that Tesla was really crazy, like with some illnesses, right? And this is because of pooping and and tesla never never uh f forgive him like never forgave him till the very last moment of pooping life and he went to visit him but uh, they didn't talk to each other for 30 years instead in serbia they say ah they were like you know the two serbs like going to america and becomes like no it's not like that like uh Pupin, uh, like they were not friends, like Pupin actually cheated on him and he was the cause of his, uh, how do you say, like uh, disappearance from from everywhere. Okay, if there are no other comments or questions, I, I would uh, I would like to make like uh, a sum up of this uh, webinar by by uh, raising short questions and awaiting short answers for that from you, Daniele. Yeah, if you agree. Yeah, yeah. Then we then after that we could we can close. So uh, first of all, what's the most important thing that distinguish this scientist Nikola Tesla as a scientist? You think if you want to count what are the most important uh, points in his character that you think should be inspiring nowadays for all of us scientists students academics humanity yeah what are the important uh points in his the, character that I should be inspiring for all of us in this time yeah i would say like the important skills like he had like I, I would say like uh, behaviors, like he was humble, he was like a hard worker and he was confident and he was like focused. He was always focused on what he wanted to say and he had a strong will. And he, uh, he took the energies to, to fuel this by like reading. By so he was self-motivated also. He was self-motivated, yeah. He was very sure that he was right. Like for him, it was logical. Like that, that like he was logical, like to, that the electricity would, would come from like nature, right? And so the Niagara Falls, like so. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you want to make it in a short answer, what did he do? to make his dreams uh, reality? Practice. Practice. OK. And um, what's the heritage left by Tesla? It's this message of peace, and it's very sad that uh, we didn't reach, and he was talking already back then, like, Tesla invented like a, a, an electric electric motor for for a car already back then, but like you know because of money and monetizing, we gave the priority to fossil fuels, and like we we could we could change already back then, right? But nobody nobody listened, and and still like after two centuries, nobody is listening, like and is and and it appears to me that the only solution is to switch and to start listening to the words, to, to his heritage, what he was saying. 
And I think also like that we didn't focus on these sentences because for a long time, like for 50 years, everybody, he disappeared and everybody thought he was crazy, like a crazy wizard, you know. Do you think he was crazy? He wasn't crazy at all. Like he had some habits that nowadays would be normal, you know, would be like routine. But he had these habits like back then. And so, like, he was vegetarian, right? Like, who, who was vegetarian back then? When I like, come to Europe, I am also vegetarian. <laughs> I've been vegetarian for five years, but back then, if you say, like, but, I don't eat... But that, that's not abnormal. That's a choice. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, Muhammad Abbas put uh, uh, a question maybe in the chat, I think. I can read. What were the mistakes of Nicola in your opinion? Thank you, Muhammad. Daniele. Mistake. Mistakes. What do you think the mistakes of Nicola? Well, it could save some money, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just save a bit, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, he could have had like a wife, for example. He didn't. He didn't want to. Uh, I think. I think if you if you if you know if you get even a family it doesn't mean that you you cannot reach your goals, right? Like I, actually having a stability behind you, and and I think that uh, eventually he wasn't stable because like this was a big gap in his life. Uh, and maybe it would be like much less stressed for some things. And maybe also like imagine like living in a hotel for like all your life. Like, it's, yeah, this is this is really difficult. Yeah, it's uh, to be always like a traveler. Yeah. It's not uh, may, maybe maybe it would be better, you know, if at some point. Some balance. Yeah, yeah some balance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some balance. Okay, uh, uh, I'm just checking the list of questions. What is the most influential event in his life? Uh, is in, the Titanic? Yeah. In your opinion? I I think his life changed completely with the Titanic sunk. Yeah. Okay. If that didn't happen, like uh, he would go on. And maybe who knows what he would invented, you know? Okay. Uh, there is another event. There is. Yeah, okay. another event, very tragic. Tragic when he was when he actually witnessed the death of his brother. And he, yes. and, he, and he was a child. He was like five or seven. Yes. And it was a horse accident. And this affected the life of the entire family, you know, this tragedy. And he said, like, my parents never recovered by that. And that, that's when I developed, like, anxiety and, like, and also the will of being good and always good because, like, to fill the gap of, of, of this mm. missing brother, you know. And, uh, and also when he got sick. When his when his father promised him if if he recovered he would go to engineering. You know I, I think have that, a, that was a turning point in his life. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, he was he was definitely, but I still don't know because I'm a bit malicious, you know. And uh, and I say like, was it very, like for real sick or like he? plan that right because that would would be the only way to convince his father you know yeah but also it's proven in science and in psychology that uh, your feelings help you recover from uh, yeah 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 disease. like placebo placebo effect i don't know so, so like this is psychologically and scientifically proven so it could be true that that yeah. uh, that when he got this good news this promise from his father, so he psychologically started uh, to rega recover because he has something to live for. When you have something to live for, you will be definitely stronger. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's true. Definitely. I think like he staged a little bit something, you know, like to push his father to say, yeah, you can go. And then he went, you know. Okay. But... In my list of questions, I have the last two. One of them, if you didn't do this novel during COVID lockdown, what would you have done? During COVID lockdown? Yes. <laughs> I remember you told me that you worked on this during the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't do this graphic during the lockdown, what you what you could have done? Or in another way, why did you decide it to, to spend your time in the in in writing a book in not writing, sorry, in drawing a book? You don't like the word writing. In crafting, no, it, it is know. also a big part of writing, you know, like because okay. a comic book is uh, like uh, like eighty percent of contents and 20% if drawings. Like if you have great drawings and the story doesn't work, it's not a good, it's, it's not a good book. But if you have like great contents and like mediocre drawings, it, it's, it's a great book anyway, so. Okay, so. Uh, what I would do, I don't know, I, I would, uh, I would maybe learn other techniques because I, I learned also watercolor during that time because I never painted watercolors and I always wanted to do it. And so I practice, practice, practice a lot. And then at some point I said, I have all this idea and research and I said like, I should actually draw and practice for a book. So like I do for a reason, you know, and not just drawing. And uh, th there is another cool detail about this book that when I was almost finishing it, like on the way I became so much better, right? So the the last the last drawings they were much better than the than the at the, the beginning. beginning of the book. So and I became also much faster. So I stayed like a week and I said, should I redraw everything now? Like and and be crazy? And I re and I redrew everything. Great. Yeah, I redrew everything because I said Great. it's not going to be the same. Great. Yeah. Th this proves that one should always compete with himself. Yeah, yeah. One should always aim to be a better version of what he was a moment ago, not necessarily a year ago. Yeah, yeah. So great that you did that. Okay, the last the last uh, question. Uh, um, how much you believe that what you did is um, really um, helping science education, science community? I think uh, because comics uh, is a is a good language to to spread like messages. I think th this book actually would work like uh, in different ages, right? Like like I don't know, like five year old could read this and maybe not, not, not get that much, right? But like you leave a bug in their brain and then maybe like after 15 years, they, they, they find back in a drawer this book and they reread and then they go study physics. You know, you never know. Or maybe they go and become like a comic artist. So like these things you put there like a seed and then they, and then they, they grow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. This is nice. And I think if nobody else uh, wanted to say something, this last answer, answer would help me to, to sum up the main idea of this webinar. As I said in the beginning, uh, or at some point, that physics and sciences, in physics and science, we need all kinds of people. And we need to use and utilize all kinds of tools that we have. We need languages, we need history, we need art as much as we need lab, lecture, textbook, instruments, calculations. But we also need these, these fine touches of other fields like history and, and art. Because by doing this, we make physics more human, I would say. And a more human physics is a good thing. Because as you said, when a student or a scientist or even a kid read read a story read the story about a scientist in a comic way or in an artistic way 
probably he, he probably this book would be his first impression or it would be a step in his path during this way of studying or of reading and for sure it would leave that impression nowadays we know many good students quit physics or quit science because at some point they lose their passion so when we introduce history biography of scientists touch of art into the knowledge and into the physics and into the science that we educate we offer them a more human physics a more human science and this help them to understand how physicists how scientists how pioneers learned throughout all their lives how they faced challenges and how they managed to overcome such challenges and for that reason i think this this is why we 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 are holding such event today and we managed this is not the first time to do similar uh, events in that goal because as physicists we are people and people come also from places and we know that the knowledge and the impressions that we develop over our lives come not only from what we study but from what we deal with so if you deal with scientists only probably you see part of the beauty of physics but you need also to look from other perspective i was asked for some time what why are you uh, interested in doing so i mean the main goal of lambda and such outreach activities is it because you love physics i thought this is an easy answer that it is because we love physics i think the true answer is that because we want to maintain this love it's not only because we love what we do but because we want to maintain this love so to maintain this love of physics and basic sciences one of our goals is to disseminate this beauty of physics and science into everybody we try to reach everyone from any different aspect and that was our goal i hope that we we managed to to fulfill this aim through this uh, webinar i know many have uh, left or had to leave but i'm grateful to those who are still uh, patient muhammad ruba tuqa nawras batul i don't know if you agree that you all open your cameras then we capture uh, the last minute uh, uh, group picture. So in the meantime, I just take the time to to thank you, all of you. You and Nan, it was like a great meeting you the first time and like, uh, uh, yeah, and like, I wouldn't expect like to be here, like if I think about two years ago, drawing this book and like, it just like, uh, I, I I really enjoy like I really enjoy talk about this. I really enjoy talk about, like chatting really like I feel like uh, uh, in my comfort zone. So it was great and thanks for this opportunity and like I'll be available for any other ideas you you might have like in the future. So thank you so much, uh, Daniele. It was really a pleasure to have you with us even if it is remotely online but again thanks to the university of jordan to make this tool uh, available for us while being on leave while being abroad it was a great pleasure to have you with us but also i hope that we will remain in contact in the future probably at some point we could collaborate on something yeah it would so be great you have my contact details you are most welcome if you are coming for any reason to jordan to visit uh, my lab I, I would expect that if you enter an accelerator laboratory, we you would get some inspiration to do some 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 good job in terms of helping physics and or science in terms of art. Also, uh, as you are back to Italy, probably we could meet uh, in Trieste, and then I offer you a yeah. visit uh, to the synchrotron. Oh uh, yeah, it would be great, great. So thank you again. Um, Daniele and everybody uh, in the audience and even those 
who who left uh, earlier because we we spent like three hours. So it was a pleasure to have you all uh, in this uh, webinar, and hopefully, uh, Daniele, hopefully we meet soon. And yeah. uh, others, please stay tuned with other activities from Lambda Physics Group, uh, celebrating the, the global uh, occasion of International Year of Basic Sciences.